Oh, we're going to have fun with this one. Nephilim has responded in dazzling brilliance to my PM. This should give me something to do while I make episode two of my Beyond Reasonable Doubt series, which for those interested will feature glowing green monkeys. Anyway, back to Nephi Cakes. The meat of my PM was showing him the Lenski experiments and how they showed mutations resulted in increased survivability and a new ability to digest citrate, etc, etc, etc. You'll remember how I gave him links and references. His response will bring you to tears with this ball-shattering defiance of observation. During 70 years of genetic experimentation, no mutation or accumulated mutations have ever caused morphological change to a species. Deformities in the individual are not permanently heritable. Genetics discredits evolution. Geneticist Dr. Herbert Nilsson, Professor of Botany at the University of Lund in Sweden, stated, My attempts to demonstrate evolution by an experiment carried on for more than 40 years have completely failed. He's not alone. This is the case with every genetic mutation experiment ever conducted in an attempt to cause life to change morphologically. Right? Okay? Was that it? Seriously? You just completely ignored the clear evidence I gave you. Great tactic. So let's have a crack at his response then. In the first point and final point, Neff brings up one of his favourite words, morphological. To someone like myself with a grounding in biology, especially anatomy, and with access to a scientific dictionary no less, it refers to form, shape and structure. Of course, Neff doesn't accept changes in shape, size, form or structure as an actual morphological change, which is odd because by that standard there is no morphological difference in the skeleton of a rhinoceros and a fruit bat. It's a very interesting fact that all mammals share the same skeleton. Although each bone has a different morphology, they hold the same relationship to each other in each species. So the toe bone's connected to the foot bone, and the foot bone's connected to the ankle bone, and the side is connected to the trunk bone. But I'll leave that tale for another video. Nephilim next says deformities are not permanently heritable. Well, duh. Mutations, however, aren't always going to result in massive deformities. Some could be beneficial, which is the whole bloody point. We don't have to go any further than Lenski to show this. And as I said in that video, the mutation allowing for digestion of citrate occurred around generation 20,000 and continued to function for the rest of the experiment, i.e. another 25,000 generations. Not permanently heritable, my foot. Now onto the so-called geneticist Nephilim quoted. First, we must point out that any modern geneticist who had failed to gain any adaptive genetic changes in bacterial species in the lab for 40 years is one shit scientist. But we have to be fair to Dr. Nilsson. He did, after all, die in 19-fucking-55. This is only two years after Watson and Crick suggested the double helix model of DNA, and three years before Francis Crick had laid out the central dogma of molecular biology, at which point the relationship between RNA and proteins was unknown. To put it bluntly, Nilsson is about as useful a source for any relevant genetics as half a goat has been shot from a cannon into the side of Uranus. The fact that Nephilim has cited him shows just how horrendously gobshite he is at assessing scientific sources for accuracy. So we've got Nephilim citing someone who didn't know anything about DNA structure, translation or protein synthesis on one hand, and we've got far too many sources to name on the other, which testify to genetic mutations causing new heritable traits within populations. In conclusion, Nephi is a fucktard. Of course we already knew this, but as with evolution, the evidence of Nephilim's fucktardery is mounting all the time, and it's a very exciting time to be a Nephilim fucktardologist, studying the various fucktarderies of Nephilim free. So to my next scientific endeavour into this field, I shall be sending the following PM in reply to Nephilim. <laughs> So on to my prediction. I predict that should Nephilim provide a response, it will be fucktarded. This will cement my theory that Nephilim is a fucktard. This evidence shall of course be submitted for the viewing pleasure of the YouTube community. The structure of the human body is something quite unique and odd. Imagine all the bones and joints connected to each other in a complex distribution formed by years of evolution. And there still is some confusion as to how it came to be. 